I started buying stocks when I was 11. I'd been reading every book in the library on it. I loved it. My dad, you know, it was his business, and I'd get to go down to his office and I'd read the books down there, and I saved the money, and finally, by the time I was 11, I could buy a stock, and I could tell you, at that time, uh, I went to New York Stock Exchange when I was nine. My dad took us to New York, each kid to New, New York once, uh, and he took me. I went to New York Stock Exchange, and I was in awe of it. I could tell you how the specialist system worked and the odd lot arrangements, and I could tell you history of finance and all of these things. And then I, then I started, I got very interested in technical analysis and charted stocks and did all kinds of crazy things, hours and hours and hours, and, and, uh, and saved money to buy other stocks and, and tried shorting and... And I just did everything. And then when I was either 19 or 20, and I can't remember exactly where I did it or something, uh, I picked up a book someplace. It wasn't a textbook at school, but it was in Lincoln, Nebraska. And I, uh, you know, I, I looked at this book and I saw one paragraph and it told me I'd been doing everything wrong. <laughs> I, I just had the whole approach wrong. I, was, I thought I, th I was in the business of trying to pick stocks that would go up. And in one paragraph, I, I saw that that was totally foolish. And then all of a sudden, you see something different than what you were seeing before. Now, and it took me in st stocks, which I was intensely interested in, and I had a decent IQ, and I was reading and thinking, and you know, and, and it was important to me to make some money on it. Every, I had every, every motivation in the world. And then I read a chapter, I read a paragraph, actually, in chapter eight, I think it was, of The Intelligent Investor. And it just, it told me that I wasn't looking at the duck, I was looking, you know, now it was the rabbit, whatever it may be. And whether you call it a light bulb, whether you call it, you know, a moment of truth, whatever it may be. And that's happened. That happened to me in Lincoln. I mean, it changed my life. If I hadn't read that book, I don't know how long I would have gone on looking for head and shoulders formations and 200-day moving averages and the odd lot ratios and all, a zillion things. And I love that kind of stuff. Except it, wasn't, it was the wrong stuff I was looking at. And I've had that happen and Charlie's had it happen, I'm sure. It happens a few times in your life. And uh, all of a sudden, you see something important that why in the hell didn't I see this in the first place? Maybe it's a week ago, maybe it's a year ago, maybe it's five years ago, maybe it's, maybe it's learning how to get along with people. You know? I mean, whether actually it's, it's better to be you know, kind or not, you know, or whether, I mean, they're just, Learning how to have, if you want the world to love you, what you have to do, or what, it's, 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 you know it when you see it, but you didn't see it for 10 years before. And I don't know whether Charlie's got some thoughts on that or not, but that's happened in a few situations in business where I've looked at a company for, for a decade, and, and, and then there's something that, it just all gets rearranged in your mind, and you, you know, you can say, "Well, why didn't I see this five years ago?" Or, but usually, I've I've had it happen a few times, obviously, and and everybody here has, and just in different areas of their lives, and you think, "How could I have been so stupid?" Well, that's what Charlie's when he was in the law practice uh, had a partner. Roy Tolles, and he, every smart guy that would get in trouble, usually with, it was guys, and usually it was with women, and the, and, and, and the, you know, they'd come into the office and they'd look, you know, down-faced and everything, and they'd say, it seemed like a good idea at the time, you know, I mean, <laughs> and, and their lives unraveled, you know, in many cases. Uh, so, there's, there is that, Apperceptive mass that's 
sitting in there inside somehow. And every now and then it produces some insight. It's better actually if it produces insight into your behavior than whether it produces insight to make money. I mean, that, that, and some people never get it. And they wonder why they're, you know, whether their kids hate them or whether there's nobody in the world that would give a damn whether they live or die. In fact, they prefer they die because then they've been courting them for their art collection or whatever it may be. It, 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 it just, Charlie would say, you know, you know, just write your obituary and reverse engineer it. And uh, not, a, not a crazy idea.